Let's see if we can do this. Okay. Ah. When you take the chance to go after your dreams, when you take... All right, next one. Okay. My silhouette, okay. Take the risk. Sure, you may fail, but what if you fly? Next one. I need to show that I'm working hard, you know? Okay. What if you succeed? What if you do greater than you could? Honestly, that trend has absolutely cracked me up. I used to be one of those people as well that used to do that, put like a really motivational thing on me like working out or whatever, but it's absolutely mugged the whole, the whole fitness influence has seen off. It's crazy. Right, so 17 weeks to go until the Milan Marathon. I need to get a running plan boxed off because at the moment I'm just doing three or four mile runs here and there, 45 minute runs at like a 10 and a half mile, minute mile pace. It's kind of all over the shop and then I'm I'm sacking off runs because it's raining. It's raining today actually. Oh, I actually think it's stopped now. So fingers crossed I can actually get out for a run today and use my new running shoes. Now I will be doing a full video on these, on the on my, my little review on them, but these are the Asics Nova Blast 4s, 41.5 millimeter stack height and an eight millimeter toe drop from the heel to the toe. So it is literally gonna be like accelerating me, accelerating me forward. I was gonna get the Nova Blast 3s because they were obviously cheaper because these are now out now. So these got these came out in De well, December, December the 1st or December the 4th, something like that. Brand spanking new and the Nova Blast 3s then got reduced in price. But there was a load of things with the Nova Blast 3s that the Nova Blast 4 fixed basically. So it was the breathability in the top of the, the foot. So they've added these new holes at the top of the foot for breathability. The heel, so in the old ones, this didn't have this like sort of like swooshed heel here. It was just kind of, it kind of stopped about there and it kind of like went in and it's it were, and people were complaining that it was digging into their heel or their Achilles. So they've added this little swoosh and then they've added more padding to there. So that, that's that's something that I was concerned about and that's now solved. The tongue as well, it's like a gusset tongue. So they say on YouTube tutorials where it, it, it attaches there and it attaches there and there um, inside the shoe. So it kind of clamps your foot down. So I'm really looking forward to getting these out. Right now, I am going to go on ChatGPT and try and get a plan together. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a profile. So I need to fill in all of my details, like how old am I, what my weight is and stuff. So I am a 28-year-old male, 92 kg, 17 weeks, first ever marathon, novice runner give me a weekly marathon training program okay now i don't want it to be okay i got an idea so what i'm going to ask it now is i want it to be more specific with each day tell me what the interval runs will consist of let's see Okay, so got weeks one to four, that's fine. Three miles easy run, four miles, including six by 30 second. Faster paced intervals with a one minute rest between each interval. Wednesday rest, three miles easy run, Friday rest, five miles at a comfortable pace, and then long run, starting at six miles and adding one mile each week. So by the end of week four, I should be at 10 miles. So I'm guessing, no, nine miles. That's fine. Um, weeks five to eight, increased distance. So we've gone from three to four miles, that's fine. Tuesday, four to five miles. Thursday, gone to four miles. Friday, rest. Saturday, seven miles. So we've got up from five from the week one to four block. This, this is, I feel like this is all you need for a marathon training guide. Like I'm not looking to try and, you know, I'm not trying to get a certain time or anything like that. So I think this, just getting me ready to complete it, I think is absolutely perfect. One thing I'm eating a lot of at the moment, well, the last week has been avocados and two eggs with some sort of bread, either a bagel or some bread. I gotta be honest as well, like doing this marathon stuff has really cleaned up what I'm eating. Like I'm looking at things now and thinking, oh, is that is that worth it? And the things that 
I am indulging on. I'm really enjoying it because I feel like I've earned it or deserved it as opposed to just snacking on random shit all the time. One thing that I have found though, and it's the same with, it's the same with every sort of fitness thing, you are susceptible to falling down like a, a rabbit hole of buying all these things that you don't need. I was scrolling through Instagram Reels actually. There's so many clips and videos of people like why eat in a day or come with me for, to tr train like a hybrid athlete and all those sorts of videos. They were using stuff like the Pure Sport like roll-on and stuff. It just seems like overpriced marketing shite. Like you just don't need it. There's plenty of cheaper alternatives out there. Like I've seen people say that Tiger Balm is really, really good. I'm not sure what the price of that is, but it's better than 40 quid for that, that Pure Sport roll-on stuff. You've got like really, really ridiculously expensive running shoes. Like people are buying the Alpha Fly 3s, which are like a nearly 300 pound shoe and using it as like a daily running shoe. Like you don't need that. You don't need the, the Alpha Fly 3s just because everyone else has got them. You don't need to buy them. And then you've got like the running, the running gear as well, like the running like shorts and t-shirts and stuff. I don't understand why people would spend 50 to 60 quid on a t-shirt you're just gonna sweat in. I just don't understand it. Like surely you want like, yeah, yeah, you want like a good fit in one and stuff, but like the cheapest, best value for money is what's gonna do you good in the long run. Like, and, and, and if you sweat too much in it or it starts to smell, you're not gonna be that pissed off about it. You could just chuck it away or try and salvage it or just get another one. But yeah, I guess those things are more tailored to people who can actually afford it. Unless you're, unless you're an elite level runner and you need stuff like that, or you're like sponsored or something, then yeah, fair enough. But if you're just a recreational runner and you know, you're on like a, an average salary, like don't, don't go wasting your money on things like that. Like you just don't need it. Right, it's run time. So everything I've got is black, right? My running jacket, my shorts, my socks are black. My running vest is black. Gloves are black-ish. Obviously the new running shoes, which I cannot wait to get in, are also black. I'm gonna do six miles, I think, six miles today, which should take me just about an hour, I would say, or maybe just over an hour because I'm gonna go for a nice, easy, easy run. So first thoughts of these, putting them on, the toe is literally right up to the end. Not well, slightly, slightly smaller. So they are true to size, so I got a size 10. And there's a lot of shoes that I put a size, I get a size nine and a half, but A6 are true to size, size 10. There we go. Might be a little bit tighter. Right, so something genuinely scary happened. So I was meant to do six miles. I had to stop at 5.11 miles, I think it was, 5.11. It was weird, like I was running, I was absolutely fine. My heart rate was between like 160 to 164 the whole time. And then all of a sudden, like my breathing just got quite shallow. I had like, I felt like a cold sweat coming on and I felt quite faint. And then I looked down at my watch to see like what my heart rate was. And it went from 164 to 199. So I stopped straight away, turned it off. I had a notification on my watch then to say that my heart rate was like 210 to 215. So I was like, oh shit, what's going on? So I felt my felt my chest and like it was beating out of my jacket. It was it was going so quick. And it just took ages for my heart to go <clears throat> to go back down to, to normal. But yeah, I just I don't know I don't know what I don't know what happened. Like literally, I'll, sh I'll show you the, the heart rate now. Like it, it stayed between 160 to 164 the whole time. Then all of a sudden it just shot up to 199, 200. It's def it definitely wasn't like a, a malfunction with the watch because I felt it coming on and I could feel my heart going really, really quick. Very weird. I'm gonna go to the doctor's tomorrow just to check there's nothing underlying. You can't be too, can't be too safe. Other than that, the shoes were absolutely unbelievable. Like. They were so comfy, really, really good. I, I had a spring in my step. Yeah, I just felt, it just felt good be running in those sorts of shoes. I felt really tall when I was running as well. Like it was kind of, kind of weird. Hopefully I can carry on the marathon training. Hopefully the doctors are, it's a good visit to the doctors. I was gonna Google it, but if I Googled it, it would, it would have told me that I've got like a hole in my heart, a blood clot and all sorts. So I'm not gonna Google it. But yeah, thanks for watching. 
and see you next week. Bye.